What's up, SEO pros? Welcome to part one of the full Surfer SEO tutorial series. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about the content editor. So let's get into it. The first thing we wanna do in the content editor is pick that keyword that we wanna target. Today, I'm gonna to be targeting the keyword keto coconut cream pie, right? So if I had a second or third keyword that I was interested in targeting, keywords that were very similar, I could also pop those in right here. Maybe I wanna say low fat, keto coconut cream pie. And as you guys can see, Surfer is giving us two options. We can either create two content editors or we can create a content editor using two keywords. Ideally, we pick this one so we can create a content editor that's very optimized. But for this video's sake, I'm only gonna target one specific keyword. Let's get into it. So once I've selected that keyword, I'm gonna go ahead and create the content editor. So now that we've created that content editor, we have this blank document which we can go ahead and fill in with our content. However, one thing that I'd recommend doing is going into the settings tab, click into it and seeing how things have been set up. Surfer will automatically set things up based on what they think is best for that specific keyword, but I recommend going in and checking to make sure that those settings are correct. So the main thing that we wanna check is the competitors that they've selected. So in this section, what they do is they pick the top five competitors with the highest content score, right? So this score right here represents the content score. However, if we see that within the list of competitors, so this is a list of the top 10 people ranking for that keyword. If we see a competitor that we recognize that we'd also like to include in that content editor, then definitely go ahead and do that. Let's say that I want to include the content of the guy who's number one, right? So all I dream about food.com, I'm going to select it. Surfer is now going to take that content into account when they're creating that content editor. You're going to see exactly what I mean in just one second. If we keep scrolling down, we're going to see that Surfer has created a content structure that they're asking us to follow. So they're saying, hey, you should aim for around 2,500 to 2,900 words in this piece of content with also a suggestion for headings, paragraphs, and images. This is purely based off the people that are performing well for this keyword. This is a very interesting section. So terms to use is where we're gonna see all the terms that Surfer is recommending that we use in our content. So we should go out and we should check this because sometimes Surfer adds in a few terms that aren't really super relevant. So we can do a lot of things in this specific section. So if we see a term that maybe you don't wanna include, you can go ahead and unselect it. Or if you see a term that you should include, you can also select it. For example, let's say that plastic wrap to me isn't super relevant. I don't want my content writer to add that keyword to my content. So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna unselect it. And I see down here that coconut filling is definitely relevant so I'm gonna select it and make sure that my content writer has included that in the content. Another thing that we can do is if I see a specific term that should be addressed as a heading, then all I need to do is select it, mark terms as heading, and now it's been marked as a heading, so now my content writer knows to go out and make that one of the headings. So it's a great way to set up your content. If we keep scrolling down, we're now gonna see a section that talks about topics and questions. So again, this helps us define that content draft by picking relevant topics and questions to answer, right? So Surfer here is pulling from people also ask within Google, and they're also pulling a bunch of topics and questions from our competitors. So we can scroll through and say, hey, you know what? I like this specific topic. I wanna add this to my content, okay? And once that's done, we see that there's a final section at the bottom for notes. This is where you can add additional notes to your copywriter or your content writer, and it's great to have. Once all of that is done, we're gonna click let's go. And now we know for a fact that the setup of this content editor has been done correctly. So we've created this content editor, and now what? So we can either start writing from scratch, which works perfectly fine, or we can go ahead and take content from an already written blog post to see how optimized it is for that specific keyword. Our goal here is to get our content score as high as possible. As a reference, I'd say that any score above 70 or 75 is already great content. We have to try to not obsess over that 100 content score mark because it can get tricky to make sure that we're optimizing it while producing great, engaging, and easy to read content. So I've gone out and I've added a bit of content to this specific content editor to show you guys exactly what I would do in this scenario. So what I see here is that I have a content score 57 out of 100. I could definitely improve this and it's telling me exactly what I need to improve. So it's saying, hey, you should definitely try to add more words, right? It's giving me the range of 2,500 to 2,900 words. I could definitely add in more words, definitely add in more headings, 
paragraphs and images. I haven't written enough content and that's an easy thing to change. On top of that, it's giving me guidance on the specific terms that I should be using and the amount of times that I should be using each one. The most important terms that you should be using will always be at the top. These are the most relevant terms. And so we definitely want to make sure that we have a good score on all of these terms. So Surfer is going to guide us to make sure that we have content that's good enough to be on the first page for that specific keyword. Also a neat little trick that you can do is once you're farther along in the optimization, you can actually hide the optimized terms. So all you see is terms that you still need to add to your content. So now once I've finished with this specific content, content editor, there's a few things that I can do. So I can go, I can copy and paste the whole thing, or I can download the content as HTML. If you guys didn't know, Surfer SEO also has a Chrome extension that works extremely well. So if you don't want to use their editor, you can connect that Chrome extension to WordPress. You can connect it to Google Docs, to Webflow, and to a bunch of other platforms. You guys can see that it's being used here directly on a WordPress, and it's a phenomenal experience. A final thing I want to touch upon is this share button. So this share button is a great function because you can copy this link. I'm going to use an incognito tab and without giving someone else access to your account, you can have a copywriter work directly on that content editor. So it's a great way to collaborate with other people from your team. If you want to continue exploring the Surfer SEO tool with the series, I'm going to add part two right here. And otherwise, here's another really great video you should check out. See you guys in the next one.